What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Masters of Sport. Oh, man. Earl, what shirt are you wearing today? I'm wearing, so this is my iMagus shirt. If you notice, the is an hourglass. So my first... Is your eyeball an hourglass? So this eyeball, this character in this book, it was this Dragonland series. He was a mage. He comes out with the red robes and turns to the black robes, and he has the dragon orb and stuff. This is like little kid Earl nerding out right now. And like I read this Dragonlance series and his character. His name's like Rasslin Major. I probably pronouncing his name wrong. But everything he saw, he saw death occurring, it decaying. So like I wouldn't like if I if he was looking at you, if I was him, he just sees your body decaying and breaking down yeah. and dying. Like that was sort of his curse. Yeah. But he ends up like there's this other magician, Fistendatilis, who he gets like back in time and like gets his powers. It's super complicated. Anyway, he ends up wanting to become a god. There's actually a his like one of the timelines he takes on the the evil goddess. I think her name's I pronounced it like Tekhisis or something like that. I don't know if I'm right. Yeah. And he defeats her but sees what the world becomes because he just becomes so par like it all just becomes death, if you will. So he decides not to defeat her and like ends up letting himself be like chained up. It, it's so cool. So is this guy's name Magus? No, his name's Raslin. Raslin. R A I S T L I N. It's something he says like in one of the books. I just Yeah, it it's just I don't know. It's deep nerd stuff. Books I read, I remember reading these books, going to wrestling tournaments, losing, <laughs> and my brother winning, and I just sat there and read these books the whole time. That'll man. be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, this, that tournament wasn't that bad. Yeah. I read a book. <laughs> well, no, anyway. and but it it was the first time too, as a reader, I like met males that read. Oh, because I didn't, I didn't have like I yeah. was a reader, but everyone I knew who read was a, was girl. a woman. Yeah. So I was like second grade. I was reading like girl books because that's what everyone was reading. Yeah. And like, I don't know, it might have helped me out in the long run. And that's way. interesting. See, my dad doesn't read, but my uncle Craig, uh huh, dude, he's like a like he reads everything. A anything you could think of, he reads. Yeah. So like it's an interesting perspective because I didn't. My dad was like that. Never, dude. I I don't know if he's ever finished a book, but my uncle Craig. It's like I we would go talk to him, and he was just, you know, he probably read fifteen books every month because he, yeah. you know, we would just talk to him about all the different stuff he was learning, and I think that's, it's good to have that. Yeah. When you're like, oh wow, dudes now, do this. They're my, not dumb. I had two friends. One, uh, Kevin Dowden, he passed, and then another one, Brandon Fogel. Those were the two like young kids males that read books yeah and just like it was like oh you're reading that i'll read that then too. yeah yeah exactly yeah. then it's like a book club yeah and it was like it was like to a point it's like thank you like it was yeah and like it was a way it was like it shaped a lot of who i am like there's a reason like i'm into a game like elden ring with its dragons right and right like magic yeah that's and stuff true like that. that's like, so true it comes from that you know what, dude you know what's interesting is like I wasn't a huge video game guy, but I did have spurts of Madden, playing Madden a lot. With my one buddy, Bauer, who writes it. Uh, he's a sports writer. Okay. And uh, I wonder for me what it would be like, uh, outside of the fact that it would take me two weeks just to learn the controls. Yeah. Again. But, like, I wonder if I would go back and play if I would see it differently. Like Madden? Yeah. See, I won't touch sports games okay because i'm playing a real person i like my i like the role-playing element of creating oh, okay. a fictitious person in a fictitious world yeah that's fair i like that like quasi agency i almost will. think though i would look at it the same way where i'd be like oh it's f this is fictitious imagine if i was this guy yeah but I, I really get to see people play football that are really good. Okay, yeah. I don't really get to see people swing and cast magic spells <laughs> and fight dragons. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I like my like fantasy, like really fantasy. Not like you know this could happen one day in your like your dream. It's like yeah, I don't yeah. know what world I'm gonna enter where I'm I'm fighting dragons anytime soon. That it, that's true. <laughs> I guess for me then it would be like a Star Trek world. They have those too. Yeah. Because I never, I never fully went into like what the stuff you yeah. were into, like Dungeons and Dragons. I, I didn't dislike it. I just never got into that, that genre. Yeah, 
and sometimes too like you need a, a crowd of people to do stuff like yeah that. yeah like you can't, uh, big time for games it's and tough to do like, that by like yourself like think about magic uh, that was like a a game i mean i'm surprised you haven't gotten into that yet so with the pokemon cards I, too i am slightly because alex rose is into it but i'm not i i just i think i would need sanderson to get into it i bet that wouldn't be a hard sell for you well, the, the thing that's funny with Pokemon right now with him is like, dude, every conversation we have is like deep into it about Pokemon. It's like, it's sort of crazy. Dude, so, like, um, it's enjoyable for me because I think about like the wrestling conversations I would have with my dad. Yeah. Growing up. That's like what I'm doing with Sanderson right Isn't now. Isn't it cool? Like, just connecting with what they're yeah, into. Yeah, it's like whatever they want. That's like, I'm. With my son, it's Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. That's what he's into. My middle daughter's into anime. We can't connect yet. I keep... I've been watching her. Or w- not watching her. I've been asking her almost every other day. You want to watch Akira? You want to watch Akira? No, I'm not that... I'm like, you say sure you're into anime. <laughs> you have to watch Akira. <laughs> like... <laughs> And it's just like yeah, you gotta put it on when she's like in the room. That's how I got her into Attack on Titan. Uh, I was watching it, and she sat there at the computer and stopped doing what she was doing and just watched it behind me. Yeah. And then one day I'm like two seasons in, and, and she's, she's like, she just starts talking behind me. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I've been watching it the whole time. I'm like, well, you could have come and sat on the couch. You didn't have to stay right back there. Right. That's funny. Yeah. 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 I did oh, technical analysis you, of that. Oh, the the beast. Yeah. Tighter when he throws it. I haven't seen season four yet. I guess the like end of it. Yeah, when he throws it. Yeah. Aaron's uncle or whatever. All right, Dane. <laughs> you got you got me off track with what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, hurry up, jeez. All I wanted to say, <laughs> you're god awful at basketball, right? Me? Yeah. Dude, ter- like, hor- horrific. Yeah, me too. I can I can dribble. I can't that well. I can dribble and I can jump. If if you could, if you could like put them together, I might be okay. Oh, you can't do them at the same time. No, type of dude, th- it's oh. it's no. I want to. S- we should have a video of you shooting. It's probably like a, a long game poly when Philip Seymour Hoffman's <laughs> like Ice Man and just throws it off the backboard. Dude. It's exactly it, dude. Yeah. All it's right. exactly it. No, yeah, terrible. All right, me too. I don't think I'm as terrible as you might. I'd be, be one on bad. one. You would just body me. Like, you'd Correct. just be like that. Correct. Maybe I'd just one time let you go up and box you out and see how you land. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, you're not doing that again. <laughs> Speaking about being tough in the paint. <laughs> yeah. Nah. I don't know. I may just start raining it down on you, too. No chance. Just launching them. You don't have a jumper. You know what? You know what? I would just say, let's play to 50, and I'd tire you out. Okay. that's That'd be good. Because I think I have... I see you do your bike things, and you're like, "Oh, ten seconds, I'm tired." No, I just held. Oh, dude, I, I held just wanted- sixty-five RPMs for twenty minutes today. How many cows did you get? It's like four hundred. Wow. Have you gotten two hundred in ten minutes yet? No. I I know one like one. No, person, yeah, I didn't burn. I was three sixty maybe. I know one person to talk to and like hang out who's gotten two hundred in ten minutes. 210 minutes yeah 203 you got i think it might have been 205 yeah his i'll try it. his name's jimmy hirsch he's he was like crossfit he was into it so 200 210 minutes i'll try at some point 210 minutes is like legit yeah that um, 10 minute mark's tough that's like i wanted to when you when you did one of these what did you get like 90 cows in, yeah, in, in five. five minutes Re- and My now think about that beat you I think about that repeating that. Oh, I, I think know. right now I could get a hundred in, in five minutes. Yeah, I I know it's hard. Yeah. But once you're like locked in, as long as you don't Yeah, I what's funny for me is after the first minute and a half, I'll have like a minute where I feel like trash and then yeah. I then I just get it moving. As long as you don't tap out, you're good. Yeah. Cause it's so repetitive. It's just like, yeah. oh just let it's it the go. same thing. Just yep. let it happen. Your heart rate's not going to go up any higher than it is right now. Right, exactly. You know. All right, so we both suck at basketball. However, yeah. we both really are stuck on this reflexive strength thing. Yep. The CPGs. What are those? Co- what's that stand for again? I know we have central to pattern generators. All right. So s- they're central pattern generators are motor neurons in the spinal cord and in the brain that 
basically tell your limbs what to do. So if you're uh, are, if if you're in a, a locomotive, you know, right. rhythmic, rhythmic movement. So if you're doing swimming, jogging, walking, running, vomiting, these are all going to be controlled by CPGs. Yeah. I'm Throwing imagining pop. someone vomiting now in rhythm. Yeah. <laughs> someone someone listening to this is gagging right yeah. now because of that noise. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, it, so that would be what CPGs are. All right, and then we got our PSOs. So that'd be peripheral self-organization. It would be like, one, how you see things around you, measurements your eyeballs are making in your brain, but also like what your limbs are feeling and, and sensing as far as uh, stability and stuff yeah, like that. That's one. So I have two senses that I think are totally underrated in the world of like the virtual and that we as – people undervalue for some reason well one we kind of do is the sense of touch and feel yeah and the role it plays in athletics oh yeah like especially with your feet you talk, yeah i was gonna say you talk about it with feet but like and there's i had this thought too that a race car driver oh they i must, bet their sense of feel it's gotta be insane. their perceptive level is unreal yeah yeah like just dude so here's a here's a concept Think about a race car driver and their feel. Think about, you know, a linebacker playing football who has to make these crazy reads and adjustments on the fly and how aware they are of their surroundings. And now bring that into a basketball player hitting a, a three step and, and three pointer. Yeah. And it's like these people exist for a large part of their day on a level that is hard for normal people to comprehend. The fact that we don't, as a human, like as a species, look at all of those things combined and go, wow, imagine if everything that we did was at that level of focus and precision. Imagine that. Everything. Man. You would be so zeroed in all the time. You, dude, it'd be like you just ripped a couple lines of Adderall. You're just super <laughs> focused. Like, so focused that it's just, it, it, it'd just be unbelievable. Oh, look at this. Let me just draw this like <laughs> one inch by one inch as detailed and <laughs> yeah, as realistic as possible. As possible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It'd be insane. All right. So we got this reflexive stuff. If you don't know, we've been talking about this. This may be like six things in a row or yeah. just six times and probably before that. And we'll probably do it again as more things. For sure. Up. So the last time we were talking about it. Especially with those Discord questions. Yeah. Dane got into... We started talking about Barry Sanders and how Dane was looking at movements, basically watched 20 of his 100 – he's seen 150 of his greatest runs. Yeah. And through 20 of them found like 10 unique sort of four-step patterns, yep. rhythms to it. And he's been taking this to this level, and we started thinking about then too. It was like, well, let's just keep going down this reflexive strength route of exercises. Yeah. So we talked about like football – and this time we wanted to talk about basketball. Yeah. Like reflexive strength movements or ways you could chunk these skills. Did you see my TikTok I made? No, I don't follow you on social media because you don't follow me. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> so what's funny is like. And I also don't have a TikTok account at all. Oh, I, I had posted on my Instagram too, but you don't follow me. So no. I see it. So I made this based off that. That's it's like. Step forward, cut back yeah. on an angle, plant two legs, jump. Oh, like a step back. The step back yeah. three. So I took that. Now I made. I wanted to make a reflexive video demonstrating why. And I had I had recorded like a, a screenshot and I put it into the video and I made this the I made the sequence for it as well. And then we're gonna use the By water the sequence. The exercise or like yeah yeah. The, so you go uh, step. Jump to the side, land on yeah. one leg, do a water bag to a hip lock and hold, and that's going to uh, mimic the jump, basically. And so I, I, I had practiced this for a couple days, and I, I had Cooper do it a couple times. And then uh, um, Cooper's a running back for Vanderbilt. I, you know, I, I was like, oh, I like this a lot. I'm going to make a video talking about how I did this because I thought people yeah. would like it. So I made the video, I showed Caitlin, and she's like, 
you know, it's okay. I get what you're trying to do, but you didn't edit the video well. Like you're talk, you show one clip in the beginning, and somehow you refer back to that the whole time, but you didn't replay it in the video. So it's losing its point, and no one's gonna understand what you're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, they're forgetting the yeah. image to it. And I'm like, she's like beating me down after I had like explained her. Like I was so proud of myself, and she's just like, "This is step up your game, Dane." Well, she's like, "This is a clear example." of the importance of like entertaining someone is also about educating them at the same time. Yeah. Like if you want to educate them, you have to entertain them and you have to be able to do it really well together because you thought people would just see that video in the beginning and, and it would work and, and that's not how it works. So you suck. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I suck at basketball too. Yeah, that's all right. That's why you have like people who are really good at editing. Yeah, editing. To, to do that for me. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm glad you're starting to step up your game with that. I'm, tr- I'm so I'm trying to get better on TikTok because I actually like using their their editing is not it's not as to me it's less clunky. Okay, it's so more intuitive. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and you can do like real cool stuff like that. So, and and talking and and discussing the chunking methods and 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 discussing. Uh, basketball specifically dude there's a lot of good stuff out there on already or yeah just on, on basketball based training okay yeah. on tiktok is it does it deal specifically with the reflexive no like, no from a no strength training standpoint okay no curious, it's like, typically like foo-foo functional basketball exercises that you see like lebron doing it's like yo come on lebron literally <laughs> lebron's setting back basketball training because he's just doing like He's doing like real simple corrective movements. Yeah. Doing high like high depth squats and it's just like dude, he's 38. He's just trying to stay healthy and like he doesn't yeah. need to do it's, any he has the CPGs that he's going to have. Like he's good. Right. You as 15, 14, 12 yeah, year old. Yeah, that's for those kids old, could You don't need to be doing what he's doing cuz you're not at that career right. in your life. Like Right. I got you. All right, so you came up with this step back jumper exercise, if you will. Yeah. That, I guess, low-key mimics, but at least, at the very least, targets the same CPG type of mindset. Yes, and this is one thing I was going to bring up, is that the water bag that I feel like... Okay, so I I think it's different in football because you're not displacing the the implement. So football, you're holding... Right. it, It does alter your trunk control when you're running with a football but what happens in basketball when you when you dribble is you're going to favor you favor that that yeah typically one foot over another typically what this is what happens when you're when you're cutting like when you're crossing somebody up yeah the one's a little bit stronger imbalances and asymmetry yeah exist, so right what i see with the water bag with basketball is it mimics the ball almost so it's like it makes it even more higher speed in real life. So with the football water bag, you said you were going about 35 pounds of water? Yeah. Would you go lighter with that? Probably lighter, yeah. Would you also consider using, like, a med ball? You probably could, but I don't think... Well, maybe it would have a place if if you would hold it at the end to... Because I, I think one of the... I'm thinking, like, isometric contraction. Yeah, of it. yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, I, I still think the water bag and the plates are probably better yeah because well the the water is way more dynamic yeah why the plate though why the plate over the the i think it's easier to learn okay so it'd be almost like a a, a chunk down if yeah you will. yeah i also think with the plate i think it forces some people to be a little more aware and i haven't played around with the med ball enough to really tell you though otherwise yeah i feel like the med ball is just more sports are you dropping the med ball like you think that they should no no i'm thinking more like oh i have done it where i'm, where holding I'm it. practicing like sort of like when i put the ball in certain positions and i'm moving it around like yes when i'm pivoting or yes. if an athlete was pivoting i would think that way yeah um it's just uh it's simple like i'm overloading the apparatus if yeah. you will like yeah for work, sure it's constantly working their grip if you will it makes it harder than like i don't know so instead of using a plate, like, can I do basketball specific? Like, if I'm doing a reflexive strength movement, with you could a do it with, with a med ball. Could I use a med ball? Like, a, yeah, I believe that. How yes. heavy would I go? Fifteen pounds. All right. 
Well, I thought you were going to say 20. I love Maybe it. Tw- I love it when you're lighter than what I think you're going to say. Maybe 20. Maybe 20, but I would say probably 15. Uh-huh. Cool. Because we were playing around with like a 25-pound plate for that. Okay. Yeah. Because a plate just, you know, like grip stuff. Like gripping yeah. like a ball, like a sphere. It's like much that. more challenging. Yeah, it, it's a different thing, especially with one hand. Yeah. Like verse two. Oh, my goodness. It's so hard. Yeah, so I, I think that that's, I mean, that's where, this is where I need to find my Barry Sanders of, of the of NBA. basketball? Yeah. Oh, man, I'm trying to there's, think. There's a lot of them, though, so, especially like, right now. Steve Nash was kind of like someone who cut up, Yo, but he, he didn't. He he did you know though. who's really no, good. No, you know who we good. Allen Iverson. Yes, you know who else would be really good. Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah. Um, Hakeem Olajuwon and Kobe too. Well, yeah, Kobe. Yeah, anyway, but what am I doing? I could just watch Kobe highlights. Yeah, all day. Jordan would be good too, but I. But Kobe would be better because he's more modern. Yeah, I don't think you can ever go wrong with Jordan. I feel oh, like yeah. LeBron. Some of LeBron was just I'm a better athlete and I'm physically more capable than you are. He's so good. Yeah, he's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm trying to think of other people watching him play. Until it's like uh, it's James Harden's pretty legit. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. He's good. So, but Kobe, legit. <laughs> Kobe would be the the way to go. Probably. Yeah, where yeah. you can like study the movement patterns and yeah. how it works. So I'll probably do that next. Yeah. No, that would be cool. And then just develop the reflexive movements off of that. Yeah. And I think a lot of these skills, too, just come back. It, dude, it, it's funny because I'm starting to see the patterning stuff. It starts with the skills, the simple skills broken down into one isolative aspect. So if we think about bodybuilding, you're isolating a bicep. Yeah. If I watch somebody move, I want to isolate a co-contraction. Okay. Or no, this movement's going to be, I'm going to isolate dynamic trunk control, which will elicit co-contractions. Or I'm going to, I'm going to fucking try and improve. Sorry, I should have sworn. First <laughs> <You laughs> last time too, Jason's going to be upset. <laughs> I'm going to improve, uh, you know, their self-organization, whatever. And, and self-organization might mean I call things out in the middle of them doing these things. So I think that's again, going off of predictions. I think it's important to isolate muscles. I do. I also think it's important to isolate skills. And when you start basketball players or any athlete, you should start at a certain point and then slowly build up to that more complex, larger chunking uh, pattern that you would see with a three to five steps. So I don't know. Maybe I'm hearing you talk about this and I'm like, why would I do that in the weight room? Can I just like do the skill on the court? Why? More so, I want you to convince me why I should do it in the weight room, too. Why I should create these skills. I think you could do... I think... Okay, so here would be my argument. I think you can do these on the court. But my... This this is what I would challenge you to... One, I think that the, the weight slows it down. And when you slow things down, you can do more complex movements. I would just challenge basketball players to take a plate or take a medicine ball or take a water bag to the court and say, I'm going to hit a hundred reps of the Euro step sequence from just three steps. I'm going to, I'm going to hit a hundred reps of, uh, you know, two step into a three. Yeah. You know, whatever the, let's say there's three setups that, that we're going to It's almost like a variation yeah. of the CPG generation. And my goal would be, they did that tw- two or three times a week to establish better cutting skills uh, to us. And that's going to lead to more open shots. So I would argue, my argument would be that if they get so good, it's just like somebody who's a wrestler perfecting single leg shots. And I know that they do this with, with skills at practice, but the hard part is it's also a team sport. So you have to factor in at practice, the other four players and what they're going to especially gonna, at, a, a lower level too. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. NBA is different. Like yeah. everyone has their own coach. Like yeah, right. Under the head coach, you right? Know? And then there's someone in analytics telling them why they should do this. Yeah. Whereas I, I think that that's like the the downfall. So you, I I wouldn't I wouldn't argue against doing it on the court. I think it's fine to do it on the court. I would argue though that I think weight training is tremendously beneficial for basketball for various reasons, and this is one of them. 
So I want to invent, if it hasn't been already, uh, a water med ball. Yeah, that's good. Like, just for basketball players. I've seen water bags for boxing that are not that good, but there's also ones that you can hold, like, a handle on the top. Yeah. And it's a med ball. It's almost like a water kettlebell. Okay. Uh, I think that's okay, but you're almost saying, like, no, just fill it up and you hold it. have a ball that's filled with water or whatever. Yeah. To do, like, have that similar movement you know the water takes on the shape of the object yeah exactly you know dylan carlson from earth i don't know i know him only because of you yeah well the band earth he i watched some video he's giving an interview and he's like we're all vessels and the music comes into us and takes on the shape of the vessel and uh, you know so when the music comes into me it takes on this shape yeah. It's like, oh, it's like the water. It's like, <laughs> gosh, man. I think it was him who said it. That, I mean, the dude from the guitarist from Acid Mother's Temple, too. Oh, said yeah. Something like that. Dude, aren't they from PA or is that? No, Black no. Ball? They're, Super they're Rainbow. Japanese. Oh, man. yeah, they are Japanese. Yeah, yeah they were no. with, uh, yes, uh, Black Moth Super Rainbow is who I was thinking Yes, about. yes, that's who you're thinking yeah. of. No. Yeah. But, man, anyway. Adam Hart. Wait, no, it was uh, Acid Mother's Temple. Dude, I haven't listened to them in. Dude, years. They had, they had another, like, a side. Oh, they have so many things. There was they another just big do. one, though. Uh, I was thinking, uh, who did that album of Silver Mount Zion? Godspeed, you Black Emperor. Oh. They're a little different. Do you know they're going on tour? And, um. Hey, I think that. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, something just. Jason, Jason, that Sony went off. The one that did it before. Godspeed, you Black Emperor. Yeah, they're going on tour right now. I, I think I didn't know that. But um, I saw a picture of the guy's amp, and it says, "Uh, it's like I don't know exactly what it says, but like it, it's basically like anti-trans people f off." Oh, really? Like, and just has it on his amp, like don't mess. It's funny. We, they have to. that impact one kid well so like what why do people hate trans people i don't know but like i think about so like utah right is like one of 12 pa has it going through now too like they they code it in like protect female sports is what they're saying like is the way they'll do it yeah um and so Utah is an example. Maybe we should debate that. Utah is an example. I don't know. If I just have an opinion. I, I'm not well researched. But Utah is an example. They're like House or Senate. Or House passed it. The governor vetoed it. And the governor said, I'm vetoing this because basically trans kids are higher risk of suicide. Yeah. All right. Because society, you know, society yeah, is yeah. just weighing down on them all the time. And then they found the amount of like trans kids like in the whole United States is like 0.7%. It might even been less. It might've been 0.07. And then what ends up happening is then they pass this law that they trans females, they don't really talk about trans males playing sports, but trans females cannot play sports. All right. So the amount of trans people trans females and then the amount of trans females playing sports is even less yeah it's it's so you know how many trans females <coughs> play sports in the state of utah four one. Oh god so they passed a law that only impacts one kid to protect all these other kids right are you really protecting these kids right or are you targeting one child right it's it's a And the governor, to his credit, Republican governor, said this. And it's just like. So they didn't pass it. it No, it got. Knocked down. The Senate, like, went and did it then, too. So it ended up going through. PA's trying to do it, too. But, like, what's crazy, if you look at the Supreme Court rulings, it's all against Title IX. And they'll say, oh, you're, you're, you're gender at birth. And it's like, yeah, but if you. If they had a driver's license, you know what gender it would say? Yeah, it would say. And you know what gender is recognized? It's yeah. like the IOC's trying to figure this out and work it out. And, like, these are the best athletes in the world. Yeah. Like, that, th- th- this isn't like – They're going to have three divisions. In, they're going to have intersex, male, female. I don't know about 
I don't know if they'll let trans compete yeah. in the future, though. I and, don't know. I don't know. And I don't know. It's just like you gotta get back on this. Yeah, uh, edit that out, Jason. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. See so what? Let's do reflexive strength basketball, and then go basketball. to the questions. Yeah, we've been doing basketball. We were talking about the the water. Oh med yeah. Ball. So the water med ball that I've seen. You said it had a like a, a handle. handle yeah. Like a so you belt? can do like I've seen people doing Turkish getups with it. Nobody was doing anything really cool with it, and I, and I think Turkish getups are cool, but not like I'm saying CPG uh, cool. Okay. Uh, so that's where I would want to see like. Dude, the water bag that we got made for us, I bet you I could talk to the guy about the type of design. Like the, yeah. No, it, and, you know, it's funny you say that, like, the the kettlebell type of thing and, like, how these movements put you in, like, odd positions. And, like, just now, and I know we're talking about basketball and, like, the steps and, like, working those to, like, make your neural drive even higher through the power. Like, it's a way of sort of – creating more intensity in the technical yeah. skill. Yep. Like, I think back to, like, when you were hanging out with your boy, Phil DeRue. It's like, yo, like, they're training this in a way, but it's like, how can we implement their fighting moves, their hip moves, the way they do that into the weight room yeah. and yep. train it that way? <clears throat> yes. And how you were talking about, like, your force velocity plates. We were talking about with the football episode with this stuff. Yeah, where, where they're planting to measure. Yeah. Yeah. And just get those forces and see that. And it's like, is that so bad? Like, is it like a sled and it's going to ruin your form? Or no. We know, that's, it, we know it, the I, velocity I, decrement actually works in some way. Right. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think no. I think all this stuff's fine. I think it's like it's figuring out. Well, the velocity decrement goes back to your point about slowing things down. Yeah, that's the whole point with the with the sled. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think that that that's the whole argument with these movements with the water bag. Yeah, you can jump that bridge though and connect the two right. to another movement. And right. It's like, so well, if we slow it down, can we make it if faster we, if and we more know, athletic than in the long run? Yeah, if we know that with speed training, and we know that with heavy implement training and in, in throwing, if you throw a heavy implement, it slows down the movement. Your technique gets better. It's not because you get stronger. It's because your technique improves because you have to hold better positions. And it's slower, so it's you're more able to hold those positions. And that leads to better technique at higher speeds. So it's the same exact concept here. Is like the heavy implement is the water bag. And it, it's an unstable implement. And so especially in a sport like basketball, where these guys are extremely tall, they, they don't have overly developed strength uh, because they – they're not going to yeah. squat like us, right? Like Gravity is a lot harder to overcome when you're over six, that eight. grade of a distance. Right. So if we can if we could train that, though, unilaterally in the weight room, and then I would say in some, some weightlifting movements that are all powers, I would say, but then you use these exercises and you make them do pauses in that deep range, I think now especially because they do tend to have ankle issues, you know, partially because of the sport, now you get them in these deep positions where they cut because they are cutting like, dude, a lot of these guys are cutting yeah. with their knee almost on the ground. And they're definitely in that movement pattern. Yes. Yeah, so here's we, a way we can load it. Here's a way we can load it, make you stronger, make you more stable, make there be less noise. And so that you can get out of that cut even and faster. Transfer to your sport in a exactly. very real legit way to make things happen. Right. Exactly. Good on basketball? Yeah, I'm good there. I, I do want to do, take time and spend time analyzing Kobe and, and what, you know, and LeBron James, Michael Jordan, I yeah. would say all three of those. Maybe even like Giannis now, like different yeah. types. Like basketball, it, it seems like you can sprinkle a lot of different flavors. And get and get yeah. different styles There's out of it. There's a lot of art to basketball. Yeah. In movement. Yeah. And like agility, if you will. But I always feel like people don't think you can coach agility. And I feel like. The idea of attacking CPGs is like is we can. You can, yeah. There's and evidence now. We're going to do it. Yeah. And here it is. All right, let's go to these audience questions. Oh, we got three again. YouTube community. Oh, dude, you're reading this one. Arjun. Yeah, Mira Leader. <laughs> <laughs> Arjun Mural, Mura Leadhar. See? I'll read it. Have most of the okay. athletes, especially weightlifters, go through a bulking cutting cycle. If so, are there any differences in training while being hypocaloric? This is a good question. How can I reduce joint agitation from lifting while Ooh. cutting? So essentially, 
Arjun is asking, uh, while you're in a hypercaloric deficit, so you're cutting a lot of weight, um, how do you prevent, you know, how do you have healthier joints? I would say use part of your calories towards collagen or, or fish oil or, or DHA or EPA, flaxseed oil, stuff like that can help do mobility work. And then also, uh, you know, is it normal? What's he say there at the end? They said something about while you're cutting. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it being aware that when you're cutting, you're going to be more fatigued. Joint in agitation. Yeah. Is agitation in general when you're in a caloric deficit is very yeah, normal. So it's like just be aware that, you know, your training volume is going to have to decrease. So yeah. toughen up there. <laughs> you know, what's the word I'm looking for? You ever like leave like junk food out and it gets all hard? What's that word again? Stale. Stale. Yeah. Yeah. Just like get stale for get a little. Get stale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's literally. What's happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very much so. What's gonna happen? Man. It was much funnier in my head, but I couldn't <laughs> process. <laughs> my my vocal CPGs were lacking. Were lacking. <laughs> yeah. My my wit was not wit with it. That one wasn't that good either. <laughs> Can I tell a quick joke? No, you just had two failures. No, this one's really good. You lose the third one. Do trees poop? No. How do we get number two pencils then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good I'm one. I'm going to keep telling that one. That's a good All one. All right. This is Vucko623. So I've started doing power cleans again for about last two months, and I started having strong pain in the front of my shoulder. Do you guys know what mistake and technique could be causing it? I am not a weightlifter. I use power cleans to boost my athletic performance for my sport of handball. Ooh. I I don't I mean, it's tough because is it is it on the clavicle or is it on Where the front the of the deltoid? Yeah. Cuz it's it's like a it, it you know, I would say uh, rhomboid work initially if it was the front of your deltoid, way more rhomboid work especially if you're doing overhead sports. Uh, dumbbell external rotation and then lengthening your lat that would be my first answer if it's your clavicle it might be just the way you're catching it you're not catching it high enough uh or you need a little bit more upper pec development or or more deltoid development to help with that so that would be my my Get answer swole, kid yeah a little bit more beefy a lot of weightlifters who who have shoulder pain as they get bigger so a lot of them <clears throat> even will black out a lot as they get bigger and older in the sport uh -huh. they black out less because they actually get development on their deltoid yeah. so bigger delts kid all right this one's from discord yes nice job on discord frank alicious yeah way to go jason all that hard work's paying off <laughs> a lot too I'm, c I'm gonna ask him how many people are on there then since it's so youthful does he know yeah. wow that's a, dude. That, that's good. That was like, yeah. Th that's v those of you listening. Discord is like very, like, underground with what we're doing with it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Y you get pretty like, quick and direct access. That's cool. To garage, just so you know. Yeah, and you you get to meet other as Jason just said. Uh, you can't hear it people within the discord like bond like you're gonna make yeah, that's cool i, I don't want to say like you're gonna be friends but you're gonna be in a community of knowledgeable people that are interested in exactly what you're there and interested for and it it, it comes across very supportive like yeah you know how social media sometimes can be really toxic like that's not the case where it's at right now and it's growing and small so like you get in like yeah that's cool you can get that access you all know what it's like to be a hipster in the first one involved right <laughs> <laughs> all right discord frank alicious dude i understand like nutrition pretty well i just kind of suck at it i've done wrestling which probably didn't help my problem but do you know anything about dealing with eating disorders like i understand Ooh. what eliminating this disorder and what healthy happy eating looks like it's just doing it feels impossible Sounds like wrestling did a number on. I dude, wrestling is freaking really prominent with eating disorders yeah. and with autoimmunes. If you have any genetic predisposition, and I, and I, 
I think if you th look at eating disorders through that lens, like if this guy has maybe, you know, maybe he has addiction in his family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like eating disorders to a point are similar to addictions or, or similar to uh, certain. Uh, I mean, it's, it's like there's two, there's a couple types of disorders, like eating disorders. Um, but if you are in, if you're in, it's not the sport of wrestling. It's the people in it. Right, right. They can they can alter things that you're doing. Weren't you telling me the Russians are like we don't? Yeah, don't, yeah like, it's stupid. Should, it's like, a joke. You go right. and you compete. You're That's a little it. thicker now. All right, move up a weight class. Yeah, exactly. Like, so it's like these, you know, these little triggers essentially can can spark some genetic response that leads to a disorder. I I can't speak on a eating disorder though. I yeah. I can't speak on that. I've worked with addicts a bit, not a ton, but enough. Like I, I have, we've had clients here who, yeah, trained athletes yeah, that who've been addicts and also who are, you know, who've recovered and also who haven't. And so, yeah. like, I, I think in this case, if he feels like he has a eating disorder, he should go see, he should go see help and and talk to someone. Yeah, and helps like where it's at. Yeah, I think everybody should see. Yeah, help. especially if it feels impossible, man. Like yeah. our person, I don't know. if. Based off Frank Alicious, we're going to yeah. jump to the conclusion, but could be yeah. Francine. Well, I don't know. <laughs> could be. Yeah. All right. But, yeah, if you have any eating disorder, I would go see yeah. help. And if you're a human being, I would go see help because we yeah. all need it. They, we all need it. You almost need, like, therapy like you need an annual checkup. Like, it would oh hell everyone, yeah. like, yeah. tremendously. Yeah, that's a good way to put it because then you have, like, that, that uh, baseline. Yeah, I feel like I'm lame because, like, I'm the only one in my family, I think, now that isn't going, other than my young, young son, that, like, just doesn't go see a therapist just for, like, mental oh, okay, and health okay. type things. Man, yeah, that's I, what happens when you grow up male in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> that's so accurate. <laughs> I don't need that. Yeah. Screw you, <laughs> butthead. I think I would go. I'm just, I, right now they're all about that tele- stuff and yeah. like that's not nah, my vibe like nah, you don't i've done that though i i've actually done that with good success yeah but i could see that not being certain people's yeah and already me too male united states as dude actually as funny story be. the yeah that's true <laughs> uh, tell your story my therapist was in chicago for a while uh -huh. and then moved to uh oxford mississippi the old miss he's a professor there and he's like Dude, I need to start going to therapy because this is not Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my story. Nice. Sorry. No, <laughs> Sorry, anybody it. from Oxford. <laughs> I'm sure there's great It's probably there. nice there. But, like, you know, you've been spending time in Chicago. It's, you know, geographic. Yeah. What is it? Um, Who is it? Smog or whatever. He has this one lyric. It took me a thousand years to learn the slang. <laughs> and it's like I, I had to move away, move to the country or something. I forget the lyric yeah. exactly, but it's the idea. I always talked about it growing up. Like when my parents moved into town, like there's generations of people. Like there's yeah. just a language and a community, and not like a bad language or something. No, it's just specific. Yeah, they just they talk a certain way. Yep. They communicate a certain way. They're certain the like flow of the, yeah. the town. Yep, everything. Yeah, not good or bad, just is. And like yeah. when you're an and you're comfortable with it. Yeah. So then you, it's same with Chicago. Same, you feel it. Yeah. Then when you leave, you go somewhere else. You're in the South. It's a lot different. Yeah. It, it's like you've been eating, uh, I don't know, let's say you've been eating vanilla bean your whole life, and now you have to start eating French vanilla. It, it, yeah. You're like, wait, there's something off here. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody you screw know. with me. <laughs> the real ones know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, All right. So we're going to start adding more more chunking movements around yeah. reflexive training for basketball to our repertoire. And if you've got serious problems, go seek help. Yeah. Peace.